What's up y'all? We are back on the farm where we did the planting brown video back in the spring. I say the spring, more like the summer. I think we planted those on July 3rd and 4th. Um, we had a pretty tough time this spring fighting the rain, the weather. It was interesting. We're back here. It's November 3rd, so a full four months later and we're harvesting these beans where we planted brown we'll leave a link to that video these beans were planted on 30 inch rows uh, population ranged from i think 180 to 200 that day given what these beans have gone through they are doing really well the last farm we went to i think it averaged 32 or 3 so subpar to say the least and the edges here made about you know in the 30 mid 30s somewhere in there but out in the field they're in the upper 40s to the upper 50s they're doing really well this is a pioneer enlist variety 48 a 14 e we've never had this bean before but from what i am seeing i like it it's doing a really good job i said loaded with four bean pods they did they are they really are so we did plant this brown um our intentions were to plant it green the weather got away from us the cover crop actually went to seed and that's what all of this volunteer green that you see is it's all volunteer there's a lot of rye there's trit out here there's a lot of vetch a lot of clover it's worse in some spots more so than others surprisingly it's not making it terribly hard for the combine the headers are moving over it pretty well i do want to make sure i tell you all the good and the bad we did have to quit and shut down probably an hour earlier than what we could have continued um, because of all of the dead biomass on the ground all of the green cover as soon as that sun goes down it's just a different story it'll it will start pushing um it just doesn't flow as well but there are benefits you know the benefits i hope with time will outweigh the hindrances. All right, let's get to the fun part here. It's pretty thick. I mean, this is this is about as thick as I have ever seen. There are tons of little baby earthworms under here. I'm gonna do my best to show the camera all of these little holes. You can see all these little holes here. Those are from earthworms. That is earthworm castings that earthworms have deposited here. There's a worm coming through. There's a little baby worm there on the side. The earthworm castings in this is wild to me. And the soil is really mellow. All of that right there is the earthworm casting on top of the ground right there. After seeing how much the soil has changed over just a short three year period, it really gives me a lot of hope that we're on the right track here. But we are gonna follow this up with that cover crop planting. This will go to corn next year. That's another reason for my nine way blend. I like a really diverse blend in front of corn. Tuesday in two days, um, we're gonna get another inch of rain. So. We got to keep moving and especially with all this volunteer cover crop out here if it has more time to mature not mature but get bigger it's really going to create a problem for the combine in the future so we've got to keep moving y'all ready yeah what are you going to do today sleep okay so right now we're showing 53 52, 51, 49, 50, 51, 52. Uh, moisture's running about 13, so they were 12 yesterday, so they picked up a point. Upper 40s, low 50s is kind of where we've been. And I'm pretty happy with that, honestly, because, like I said, it's been a subpar harvest year for beans also, and we've cut a lot of 30 bushel beans. I cut some as low as 19, so it's been tough. 56, up to 57 there. 9,500 does not like those green stems. 
You choke it? Yeah. <laughs> Is it from green stems or something else? Green stem. It ain't the cover? No, I don't think so. I have never cut a 30 inch soybean. So this is pretty strange for me. We've always had 15, 18, or 20 inch soybeans. I do like the idea of coming in here and making a wide drop application into these beans. I would like to hear from other people if y'all do that, if you've ever tried it, if it works, if it doesn't work. It's riding over the straw that's on the ground and the green cover crop pretty well, the volunteer cover. You can kind of see there behind the head that it's kind of gliding over it. These are the drain ditch areas that I talk about sometimes, and there's really no disturbance in these areas with this much organic matter on the ground. They are still there because, you know, years and years and years of farming, that's where the water runs anyway. The beans from this farm are going to the bin back at the shop, and the grain cart has scales on it, so we're getting a weight on everything before it goes in the bin really helpful for record keeping and just knowing what you have so we'll keep on rocking pulling back into the shop here with our second load of beans and we're gonna stick these beans in this middle bin These bins were built in the late 70s and have been here ever since. We, we use them every fall just for different commodities, usually corn or beans. We had put some wheat or some triticale in them before, but they hold about 7,000 bushels a piece. So you're looking at about 21,000 total room of storage here. Not a whole lot of storage, but they still are useful and they still serve a purpose, so we continue to use them. If you like what you're seeing here, uh, give us a follow, subscribe to our channel, like this video. It helps other people find it. And our goal is to show the good and the bad of these systems and hopefully help others along the way. So thank y'all for watching. See you next time.